right, so the effects of yelling. If you've ever been yelled at, you will know that loud voices actually does not make the message get clearer. You know that when people are yelling, you can't really hear. It's a huge challenge. It happens all the time. So it means that yelling maxes your messages and makes it, you know, not for, for the person you're actually speaking to, not to be able to hear you. Your children are not different, so don't think, oh, when they shout at me, it doesn't send the message to me, but when they shout at my children, it will send the message to them, they are also human. So shouting will make them tune out. And that discipline you are actually trying to, you know, put out will be harder. Remember that we say that discipline is teaching. So if your discipline is teaching, it means that when you're yelling, so it means that the child is not actually listening to you. So, recent research actually says that yelling makes children more aggressive. You know, I shared earlier how a child, you know, who was very aggressive and I realized that they actually came from the home. I shared that story previously. And it also makes them more aggressive physically and also verbally. The children begin to actually say things that they shouldn't say. They begin to fight when they shouldn't. Yelling in general, whatever contest you want to put it, is an expression of anger. That's what it is. So when you yell, you're actually trying to express your anger. And that's because you do not have a hold of how to actually manage your anger. That is why yelling becomes like a way out so to say so really many of the times it scares children and makes them not to be secure your two major two major roles as a parent is to one for you to be able to ensure that your child feels secure two to control your emotions these are your two major roles as a parent calmness is reassuring i tell you i have been there the, the book from yelling to calm is my story and how I was able to go from yelling to that calm parent. So calmness is reassuring. Many times when things happen and then the children come to me, the fact that I'm calm makes them want to talk about it. Calmness is very reassuring. Of course, it makes your children feel loved. It makes them feel accepted. It makes them, in spite of the bad behavior, in yelling, the problem in yelling is not just about the loud voice. It's also about the things that you say while you're yelling. So if yelling at children is not a good thing, it's not a good thing, then yelling comes with, it comes with verbal put downs, like I said. It comes with you saying, look at you. What is wrong with you? Who do you, you know, you say things that you shouldn't say. Insults also. And they can also be qualified as emotional abuse. So while you say, oh no, I, I'm, I'm not physically abusing my children, I'm not in that um, party anymore, but you're emotionally abusing them. So it's been shown to have longer effects on your children. One of those effects is anxiety. So apart from aggression, we have anxiety. Many times the children are very anxious, they, they, they don't know what to do, they don't know how to do things to ensure that you're pleased, they don't know, they are confused many of the times. And then that takes them to, they are, you know, not being able to actually do the things the way that they are supposed to do it. You know what happens when a child is anxious? Another thing that happens with yelling is that it causes low self-esteem. I remember recently in our Creative Goals course, is a course that we run annually for parents who want to make parenting goals, make parenting plans and follow them through. So the one for 2020, we started running it in January 1st, it runs for the whole of the year. And what it helps them do is to build connection, make sure that their goals are reached and that the academy will help them keep them accountable and teach them what it really means to connect with their children to be able to achieve their goals so one of the issues that came out was on low self-esteem and a parent had put in a note for her child and her child had gone to school and children mocked her because you know they felt they didn't have same or well, they bullied her 
you know some children said oh why are they writing note for you some children said oh it's, it's, it's bad that they wrote it for you and all that so the child came she was excited she got that note from her parents that had nice words but she didn't want to get them again because of the way the children in the class made her feel meanwhile she felt good about these notes what does that tell you low self-esteem bullying when a child does not have a healthy self-esteem bullying will make a mess of them so the, when the, the report came back to the group we started to talk about it and the parents were like ah, but my children are really bold though. this particular child of mine is very bold and everything you know it got us talking and I said something specifically to the parents I said your child just talking is not the same thing as your child having a healthy self-esteem my daughter is quiet that's you know what you say quiet or you call quiet out there but she's very bold to be able to express herself she knows when you cut in her boundaries we were having a conversation about you know people saying things that they don't like because they're not she said well a lot of people actually say these things because they, they don't do it in their homes because the other day I was telling someone that um, we, we went somewhere on a vacation and the person was saying now oh, this vacation you're always going you soon get tired I said it's a form of bullying so I kept telling parents that if you're rich your child will be bullied if you're poor your child will be bullied if your child is smart you will be bullied if your child is dumb you will be bullied so what is your best bet build a healthy self-esteem for your child your child does not need to prove anything to anybody or make anybody feel make them feel a certain way if you don't teach your child will grow up with an unhealthy self-esteem and one of the major things that bruises many children self-esteem is the way we dish out discipline so in that class i told them i said your discipline must be done in a way that it's actually passing the message of not shutting your child down let me say that again your discipline must be done in a way that it doesn't shut out the child and make the child feel less of themselves many times we use disciplinary tools that are not okay for instance shaming remember i had said earlier that in the tools that we shared in the last previous videos we shared on what discipline is not and part of what we said was that shaming is not a disciplinary tool so if you been shaming don't use it you will bring your child self child down and crush your child's self-esteem so the way you discipline your child at home it's important to what the child will be able to do outside i say that a child that is shut down in the house will be shut will be shut down also outside so if you are in constant shutting down of your child then you are going to have the issue with self-esteem so your the healthy self-esteem begins with you being able to work on your emotions so you need to work on your emotions before you can really get this right and then increased aggression remember I had shared the story about aggression of course it's also very important that we know that our children will learn their emotions from us whatever we do is what our children will learn 